everyone to um, the Burn Tales Art Workshop with the Burn Bio Trust. We're delighted to have um, environmentalist Gordon, Gordon Darcy with us this evening. He's going to do um, an active workshop with you. And uh, so just a little warning um, that uh, Gordon will go into more detail, but you will need some art materials, some paper and colouring pencils, ideally. Um, so Gordon is, um, uh, he, he loves living on the edge of the Burren um, and he finds a lot of inspiration from the Burren and this evening he's going to, to show us, uh, draw with us some, some Burren animals um, and you can find out more about Gordon from his website which is gordondarcynature.com. Gordon is a patron of the Burn Bio Trust and we're delighted that he's, uh, he's joining us this evening. He has, has done several um, different workshops with us over the years and we're always delighted to have him because he's so inspiring. Uh, wait till you see the, the wonderful art he's going to do uh, in a while. Um, Gordon is a writer um, and a, 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 an artist and an illustrator and he has produced some books including Narture which is a, nar a nature art manual for primary schools and he has also uh, written a, a, and illustrated a book The Breathing Burn which is, is absolutely beautiful. So um, you'll be able to see him in action this evening and, and work with him and um, if you have any questions for Gordon. Uh, you can put them into the Q&A section uh, down at the bottom of your screen. Pop them in there and we'll take a um, little time about halfway through the session. We're going to go until 7.30 this evening and we will be finishing 7.30 on the dot. Um, so halfway through we might take some, some Gordon might take a break from the art and, and answer some questions about his work and, and his life and his art. So um, with that, I'll hand over to you, Gordon, and thanks so much. Thanks, Annalisa. Uh, that was a nice introduction. <laughs> I'm delighted to be part of this uh, Burren Winteridge programme and uh, to be doing my workshop with you this evening. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's wonderful to, uh, to, to be able to contribute in that way. Um, I want everyone to who participate, if they can, if they've got the materials there or can get their hands on them quickly, uh, you'll need a sketchbook and um, pencils, colored, colored pencils, maybe crayons um, or pastels. I use pastels myself. And uh, that's about all you'll need. It's pretty simple stuff, really. So if you can get your hands on those pretty quickly, we can all uh, draw together. And uh, I'm going to demonstrate to you how to how to go about drawing some animals. Um, I use the term animals very loosely because animals can mean birds and can mean amphibians and reptiles and all sorts of other things. But tonight I'm going to be dealing with mammals, uh, the furry kind of animals. And believe it or not, there's, there's 20 of those in the burn, 20 different kinds. You don't see them very often because most of them are, are nocturnal. They only come out at nighttime. Um, the ones that you do see like hares and rabbits um, are diurnal, our daytime ones. And we'll, we'll deal with one of those this evening. But um, I want to show you first of all how to go about drawing. And uh, I'm gonna make it very simple, but I do want you to follow this because if you, if you do this, it'll make a, 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 you'll get a nice result. But if you, if you, if you do it your own way, it, it'll take longer to actually execute the picture. So what I'm gonna do first of all, I'll show you. If you draw, um, an oval like that, nice and light, and another oval like, like that down below. You can actually turn that into an animal very, very quickly and readily, a mammal, should I say, uh, by just drawing around it with a, a heavier marker afterwards. So this can become something like a badger. Like that. Put his eye down there. His ear up there. And there's the nose. And what you can do is put the furry tail here and round like that for his foot. And then the front foot down here like that. So you can see if you can start off with that very simple construction, we'll give him his stripes as well while we're here. You know, you could stripes like that. Black stripes. Keep it off the line there, but that's okay. So there, there, there's the, the badger. 
uh, the outline of the badger. But did you see how I went about it? I started off with a very, very uh, indistinct oval. Now, the first book, uh, Mama I Want to Draw with You Tonight, and I'll colour this one in as well, is uh, Sarah, the, the, the calf, the, the calf that figures in the calf and the cuckoo, uh, Shane's, Shane Casey's new book. Um, so I'm going to show you how to go about drawing the calf. We start off again with this very indistinct oval shape. Like that. There we go. There's the oval like an egg. I'm going too fast to shout. Uh, and there's the second oval for the head. Okay. Now, how are we going to make this into a calf? Looks a wee bit off the mark at the moment. But what we'll do is we, we'll put the ears on it first of all. There's the top of the head. The ears come out like that. The important thing is to get the ears the same size, roughly. You can. Roughly the same size. And then we have a um, kind of square in here like this. Please slow down a little. Am I going too fast? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, this is going to become its nose and its mouth. Like that. And actually, this goes out a little bit like that. If you ever see a calf up close, um, part of the nose coming in like that. Okay, see that? Shade that and make it a bit darker. Now the eyes are the important thing. You've got to get the eyes in the right place. On there, good big soft eyes, and at an angle. See the way they're sort of tilted upwards like that. That's okay. Maybe this one a little bit lower. So there's the face, if you like. Just uh, put a little bit of darkness in the eye like that. Bring it to life. Line there, line there. Now the one we mustn't forget yeah, are the ear tags. Every father knows that. You have to have the ear tags like that. Okay. Now, come down a little bit like this. Underneath here we can bring his body. You can see now I'm going outside the line. The line was only just a guide. Um, so down here there's a kind of a hangy down bit called a dewlap. And then we put one of the legs here and one of the legs there like that. And I have a kind of a knobbly knee, even when they're very young. Cast of a knobbly knee like that. And the back legs probably splayed out a little bit. Can they stand a little bit awkwardly when they're young like that? And what about um, the tail? Yeah, you might see the tail coming out like this at the back. Oh, we're getting somewhere. This is beginning to look a little bit like Sarah. No horns, of course. And maybe some grass down below, standing underneath like that, standing in the grass. Now, why don't we colour in? Can I colour Sarah in as well? I have some colours here. I'll put those down like that for the time being. And we know if it's a short horn, it'd probably be this colour here, kind of a nice reddy brown colour. I'll do this as quickly as I can. Put some colour in the ear here, there as well. There. Okay. Now, I forgot about the star underneath the eye. That, uh, Sarah had a white star there, just in here, but it doesn't matter. It's not that important. I'll come down here as well with this crayon. When you turn the crayon on the side like that, you can cover the page very quickly. I like to do that. And on the legs. Okay. Now, what about a darker cover where there's no sunlight getting in? So maybe under here. The shadow like that helps here as well. Inside the ear. Yeah, maybe some colour in the eye too. Wow. 
I have it in my hand. Okay, what colour is the nose going to be? Pink. Pink nose. That's more flesh coloured, I suppose, than pink. And of course, bright yellow ear tags. I have no number to put on them, but uh, if you read Shane Casey's book and look at the pictures and if you'll see that there, there are numbers on the ear tags. Okay, uh, a little bit of black perhaps for the tail. Okay. And some green for grass underneath. I just go up and down like that to give the impression of the grass growing up like that. Oops, make a few curly bits as well if you wish. And I put a little bit of this colour under the chin. Here. Yeah, that's enough. There we go. And um, some blue in the sky? Yeah, why not? Do get nice blue patches in the sky in the barn, even at this time of the year. Okay, so this is Sarah. What do you think? Yeah? Yeah, I think it's okay. I think it's okay. So look, let's uh, go on to the next one while we're here. Uh, I'll take these markers out again. So you've got the picture now I hope. Very very light ovals to start with and then the heavier marker afterwards. So let's do, um, the, uh, we'll do a goat this time because the goat is uh, uh, very much a burn animal. Um, now I'm going to draw just the goat up close because I don't think it's, you know, because of the shape of the page it doesn't lend itself to doing it horizontally. So we'll do a big oval like that for its body, and then another oval here for its head. Now, again, make sure you do those lightly. Don't lean heavy when you're doing the two ovals. You with me? Good, 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 good. <clears throat> Let's see how we're going to turn this into a goat. We have to get the horns, don't we? These great big horns that they have. An amazing sight actually at this time of the year. If you're up in the barn, you can see the big billies showing off their great big horns. They're not antlers, deer have antlers, but goats have horns. <clears throat> now, the shape of the head's important. It comes down like that, and that's why you must go outside the line occasionally like that. There's his uh, mouth there. Yep. And the eye is very, very high up on the head. It's very strange when you see a goat. His eyes, not where you think it is, it's, it's right up on the top of his head. And his ear pricked up like that, a little pointy ear, makes him look rather devilish sometimes. Now, the, the pupil in the eye is also very funny. It's horizontal pupil. It's not a straight up and down pupil or, or a round pupil, uh, like a cat or a dog would have. So let's see how we're going to get the shape of this. We we'll mustn't forget the beard, of course. There's the beard. Uh, very shaggy kind of shape to him. That's his back. And that's a shaggy coat down like this. I can see the leg, top of his leg just there. Yeah. And Segregate all along the horns. They go in a completely new uh, section every year. So you can draw those lines indicating that. Making them squiggly like that. Okay, so inside of the ear here, I'll just darken it down a little bit like that. Now, there's the outline of our goat. So let's do a bit of colouring. 
just the fun part of with the actual colour of in. When we do his eye first before we forget, kind of yellowy eye like that. There's the eye. And then we'll do the horns, another kind of a goldy coloured one here. Yeah, goldy colours looks good. A greeny yellowy colour for the horns. Slow down, Gordon. Slow oh, down. I'm going too fast. Yeah, okay. I'm Siobhan and Louise. Okay. Let's slow down. How about that? Are you up with me now? Okay. Let's colour around the nose and the mouth. We were down in Kilorban recently and they have a festival there for the goat. They take a goat from the countryside, a wild goat like this, and they put it up on top of a tower, 60 foot high, and they have a whole festival uh, surrounding that goat. They don't do it in the burren, but there are some very, very old goats in the burren. And if you're up there at this time of the year, you can see the billies actually charging against one another. They bang their heads together like bighorn sheep in the Rocky Mountains. And they make a terrific noise and it's a, a feature of these wild goats uh, that they behave in that manner so i'm just going to make this guy black because one of the ones that i saw not long ago was jet black with a little bit of white down the front of his head just there and the rest of them was black I'm just putting this on quickly because the actual coat is very, very shaggy, very rough. And the more, the quicker you do it like this, the more shaggy it looks. So if you turn your crayon on the side and you're doing your own picture, you'll get the same effect. Lines that come down with the beard. zigzags here now and it'll be much darker down below because there's no sun getting in there it's quite black down in there like that all the hair all hanging down like that oh yeah they're not entirely loved though the farmers can have mixed views about the bur about the burn goats because they're inclined when they get together in big groups uh, they can wander around the, the uplands of the burn and knock the walls down and that can be a, an awful problem for the farmer who has to go back up and fix them up again. So even though they've been there for hundreds of years, some of them they reckon have been there since Celtic times. Even though they're part of the furniture as it were, they, they sometimes have very bad manners. But they do a great job in keeping the hazel scrub back. The hazel scrub which gets very, very deep and, and heavy and uh, it's let go its own way. The goats don't eat that back. Our cattle would tend not to do that because they're not very fond of hazel. But goats love it. So there you are. Let's put some, uh, yeah, we'll put a little bit blue sky behind. There we go. I like to do this just to brighten the picture up a little bit. This guy. And you know what would be a fun thing to do if you draw in the background we could do a wall, couldn't we? A burn wall. All the stones. One's going in the opposite direction like that. small ones on top, big ones down here. That's just the outline of the wall if you like. What I can do is put some crayon to that. I can find my grey. Yeah, here's grey. And 
actually like a better, deeper growth than that. And so on. Come. And maybe a little bit of black in here as well. Okay. Difference between the stones. Oh, getting a kind of a slightly out of focus wall in the distance there, which is what you want. And, uh, you might even see sticking my head over the other side. Let's just see how good it is in here. No. Horns are like that. Straight up. Make it a different color. Problem with the crayons, they tend to break. They're soft. Okay, there we go. Okay, what do you think? Do you like that one? That's um, the wild goat. What's this? It is an Irish. It's um, a Gower Fian, I think, is the Irish word. Gower Fian. So we we'll call this the wild goat. No. Okay, so far so good. Let's uh, go on with another one. Are there any questions at this stage? Does anyone to, uh, to ask me a question about any of the animals? Hmm? Do you work from photos outside or memory? I do two things. I sketch in the field and I sketch when I come home. And I sometimes have to use photographs to get detail. Okay. So if I, I try to keep them as natural as I possibly can from my own work, but then if I need to get certain aspects right and proportions and so on, I'll look at the photographs too. Okay, does that answer it? Good. Now, any other questions? No? Everyone happy enough? Good, 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 that's great. No. Enjoy, but to slow up a little again. Slow up a little, okay. Well, the one I was thinking of doing next is a, a kind of seasonal animal or seasonal, seasonal mammal, uh, because we're coming very close to Halloween. And one of the little creatures that's abroad at Halloween is the bat. And the berm is a great place for bats. Believe it or not, there are seven species and maybe even more than that, seven have been identified in the burn. And one of them uh, is very important in the burn. It's called the lesser horseshoe bat. It's quite rare uh, and endangered throughout Europe, but there are lots of them in the burn. And at this time of the year, they go from the nursery where they raise their young ones in old buildings, and they go into the caves to hibernate. So what we're going to do is we'll, we'll do a little uh, session on the bat. So if you can see uh, something of, of, of how, what they look like and where they come from. So look, uh, again, I'm going to start off with the oval. There's the oval. Uh, and another oval for the head. Didn't do that very well, but you can see that they're interlocking. Do you see that? They kind of interlock there. And I think what I'll do, yeah, I'm going to make another shape up here like a triangle. You'll see the sense of this in a minute. And I'm going to make a rectangle down here. That. 
Okay, so it's kind of geometric shapes. And one more, one more geometric shape that comes to mind. What about this? What do you think that is? The moon, of course it is. That's the moon. So we've got a rectangle down here. We've got two ovals here with a triangle there and a kind of, I don't know what you call that, a lemon, a slice out of the lemon up there. Now, we'll do the bat in flight first of all. And it's a weird looking little creature actually. It's very, very small. He's only a couple of inches uh, big, but he has a weird face. He's got a kind of a pointy bit coming up like this. <laughs> he looks like he's got a permanent smile on his face. Uh, one little eye there, because bats aren't blind. Everyone thinks bats are blind, but they're not blind at all. And then top of the head, and then these kind of pointy ears, one there. Looks a bit like a pig, doesn't he? Looks a bit like a pig. And they have these pointy things inside the ears called a tragus that focuses their echolocation. And that's the reason why they have this strange nose. They can send out signals and focus them with this strange nose that they have. Now, furry head like that. Now, okay, what about the wings? Well, because he's a mammal, you have wings like this that are that have got arms within them and up here his thumb sticks out at the top like that and there's a little hook on it as well that's what he hangs up from and when we go back to the triangle you see the sense of this down here furry body furry body okay and then his legs stick out fully legs like that stick out at the back and what we've got to do now is put the wings into this uh, structure that we've made so up to there up to there lines like that and then his, his fingers come out one two three uh, from here one two three now i'll slow down a little bit because that's a little bit complicated Everyone with me still? Good. Now, we've got this tail, haven't we? Tail comes down like this. Leader mouse, isn't that what the Germans call them? And the Irish name is Yeltog. Yeltog. So look, here we go. There we go, there are the wings. His feet then hang out. Toes hang out like that. With the last one actually joining up near the tail, that gives us some solidity to his uh, to his uh, the, the, the the back part of his of his uh, flight equipment. There we go. Some bats actually catch their prey with their feet. Some of them catch them in their mouths, of course. Now, that's the outline of our lesser horseshoe bat. What's the triangle for? The triangle is for the hibernating bat. He's gone up, he's hiding, he's inside the cave and he's hanging upside down from the roof of the cave. Like that. That's his feet. His wings are wrapped around his body. That's why it looks like a little triangle, like a little parcel. And comes up like this, down like that. And his head would be just poking out like that. You just see the tip of his ugly face, two little eyes in there. Uh, there's his ears. Now what do you see? He's hanging upside down and he has his wings wrapped around him. So I'll put the top of the cave up here like that. We have the moon there. What's this about down here then? I'll show you. This is going to be a castle, a round castle. Because that's where he's come from. He's come from a round castle. Oh. Over there like this. It's the round castle there. And we'll put it up 
So there's sticky out bits at the end of the castle like that. Okay, so there's the castle. Now, all we've got to do now that we've got our bat done is to do a bit of colouring in. Where are my colours? Here we go. Here we go. I'm going to do the sky first because I think it's nice to have an idea of what the, what the autumn sky looks like at night time. You see a bit of yellow in the sky, believe it or not, like this. There's the yellow. There. Yellow, yellow, yellow. Fading sun leaves a residual yellow colour like that. And then above that you've got a kind of a lilac showing up like this. There we go. That's the lilac. Put a little bit of that first of all because I have a darker colour I want to put on top of that again. There we go. It's dark blue. Um, there's two reasons for that. One is that the sky actually is pretty dark uh, when you look up into it uh, at dusk. And the other is when I get to the moon here, I want the moon to stand out. If you have a nice dark colour like that, the moon will stand out clearly. Okay, just getting there now. Takes a bit of time to do that. Just go around the back of the moon. Careful not to get any of the blue on the moon. Now, what do you think? It's not perfect, but it gives you the impression. That's the important thing, you get the impression of a light scene. And I have my colours here. Let's do, why don't we do the, the foreground as well while we're here? Where am I? Uh, yeah, this would be a dark green colour, won't it? Because it's night time. Let's see. Dark green like that. Orange. And we put a bit of grey on the castle, I think. And uh, the moon's up there, so it'll be lighting up back the other side of it, won't it? That's not really dark enough. I need a darker grey than that. Let's see. Oh, here's a dark grey here. Now, okay, there's the castle, and it's uh, where the bat was uh, during the, during the, the summertime. I was in there having its young ones, and now it's out flying around the place, looking for a place to hibernate. Uh, if you move that there, and we take um, this. There's tummy, grey like that underneath. It's more beige, I suppose, than grey. Underneath here. Yeah. Um, where's this? Yeah. It's a good news. Yeah. It's sticking out of the wings. It's like, I suppose, a dark beige or a grey, a grey brown. Everyone still with me? Good. Now. Okay. There he is. Mr. Bat. Yaltog, Irish name. 
I've often seen these in the caves. If you go into the cave, you're not recommended to do it though because it's a protected animal. And if you go in at night time when they're hibernating with a torch, you could put the, uh, the bat out into the countryside with no food to eat because they're insect eaters, aren't they? And if there's no insects for them to eat, it could be a disaster for the bat. Pink nose there. Put a little bit of this pink on the legs, I think, as well, because this is flesh down here. That could be a disaster. So remember, don't go looking for bats in the, win in the winter time when they're hibernating. They need a bit of privacy. Okay, so let's, um, uh, yeah, I might do this guy hanging up as well while I'm here. Oh yeah, now we're getting it. That's beginning to look like the lesser horseshoe bat now. It just takes a bit of time to build it up. I wonder how many times I've magnified him there. Remember he's only two inches long or two and a half inches long. So he's probably about 30 or 40 times in my picture, his actual size. But that helps you to see his characteristics, his features, when you do them big like that. Okay. Oh, right. yeah, this guy, so. Yeah. No. Okay. Wonderful. How are we doing for time? We're, we're good, Gordon. We might just make a stop there and I might just, uh, I think it'd be nice for you to hear a few of the comments that people yeah, have, that have made. Yeah, I'd love to hear them. I'd love to hear them. Are there any questions maybe that I can answer? Sure, yeah. So, um, just to say we have Siobhan Nigarvi and Lushna and Marie from St. Tola who are really uh -huh. enjoying the, the workshop. Oh, that's great. And well, very nice to, to, to know that. Mm-hmm. And yep. um, we have the lovely comments about your goat. Siobhan said, that's a fab way to draw a goat. And he oh. looks like he means beeswax. <laughs> and Verena said she loves the goat. She has a black pygmy goat called Angus. And her, your goat reminds her of her. Oh, and we had a little bit of a pig theme going. Um, the Murphys in County Mayo are, are, are tuning in. And uh, Fiona said uh, somehow her calf was looking like a pig, and Andrea said the same. So and then and then you said your horseshoe bat looked like a pig. So there's definitely a a, a pig thing happening. <laughs> good, 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 good. Okay, well, that's good. That's great news. It's lovely to have the feedback. Yes. That's fantastic. Yeah, and Rachel said she was drawing the horseshoe bat. I think she said she may have drawn a previously unheard of species, but. This is brilliant. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah. so, and uh, you're getting great, great um, uh, praise for your, 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 your wonderful talent. And uh, Sadie asked, do you have any favorite animals to draw? Well, you know, I'm often asked that, and particularly about birds. People say, do you have a favorite bird? Because I've always been a bird watcher. But in fact, you know, I look at nature in a different way. I don't kind of single out one from the other. I think of everything having its place. Like even well, creatures that we think of as being ugly, like a spider, if you look at them closely and watch the way they behave, they have a certain kind of magic about them that makes them beautiful and different from everything else. So I would I tend to steer away from the idea of having a favourite in nature. Is that okay? That's lovely. And then Breed is here from County Leash and she loves the workshop. And when she was young, she remembers a big puck goat used to come up from the fields into the cow's manger for some reason, and he was very smelly. <laughs> they do, they're very smelly creatures, there's no doubt about that. This is it. And you started off with Sarah the calf, and maybe you want to say a few words about uh, the book that you illustrated for Shane Casey. We just launched it last night, and Shane yeah. did a reading from the book. And the reading was fantastic. There's, there's Sarah there, look. Can you see Sarah? With the numbers on her, on her, on her ears, or her ear tags? She's gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. 
And uh, yeah, it's, it was a lovely little story with a, a cuckoo uh, telling the, the, the calf where the flowers were. And you can see, I just run quickly through the pictures here and you can see the cuckoo there and the calf uh, uh, interacting. Uh, and uh, then the calf going off and finding the, the, the flowers for itself. It's a very nice, gentle little story. And it was beautifully read by, by Shane last night. And, you know, he, he brings the farmer into it. And the farmer is a very important part of what goes on in the Burren, as everyone knows, uh, with the Winteridge program that's on at the moment. So you really have to think in terms of not just the animals and the wildlife that's there, but how it's being used for farming down the years and how important uh, all that aspect of it is. So there you can see the calf and the cuckoo uh, communicating with one another. And yeah. Okay, so hopefully you'll get your own copy. Um, it's, it's, uh, I'm not quite sure how it's being distributed, but I know that uh, Shane is making it available uh, for, for, for uh, everyone very soon. That's right. Yeah, yeah. You, you can actually get it from the Burren Bio Trust. We have yeah, it available online. Yeah, so if you go into yeah. our website, you can get it there. Now, the questions are flying in at the hellos. So just to say from Fenor, where Shane Casey, who wrote the book, is from, Harry and Simon O'Neill and Mom are loving the drawing. And oh, um, yeah, getting lots of, lots of, we love this. And they're asking, where did you find the bat? Oh, I found the bats in various different places. I've seen them hibernating in the caves, in Vico Cave, uh, in souterrains, which are kind of underground chambers and ring forts. You'll find them in there as well. Uh, but you're not, as I said, they mustn't be disturbed in the winter time. We were very, very careful that we didn't disturb them. I've also found them in castles, in one or two castles. Um, they tend to go into the dark little uh, alcoves in the castles uh, where they won't be disturbed. Okay? Wonderful. And just to say then, I'll just give you one more little comment. Maeve, Katie and Saoirse are loving the workshop and Saoirse did a lovely, friendly bat. And I did have a request for a cuckoo. I don't know if you have a cuckoo on, on, um, <laughs> in your plans this evening. I no, think you were going know. to do mammals, wasn't it? I'm going to do mammals. And we'll do, the next time we'll do birds. How about Excellent. that? That's yeah. great. Thank you, Gordon. I'll let you get back to it. We just have 15 minutes left. So oh, back, to the, back to the drawing Back to the drawing board. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, back to the drawing board is right. Let me just get this turned over if I can get the pages separated here. Uh, here we go. Now, the one I want to do next is the hare. The hare is a real burren animal and it's one of only two animals that come down to us from the Ice Age. So let's, there's the oval for his body. Um, and we'll put an oval up here for its head. Now it's more like a circle than an oval. Um, I'm just trying to think this one out because I want to get him sitting on his backside, looking over his shoulder, because it, that's what you, the, the way you often see a hare. Um, how do you know it's a hare? Well, the first thing you've got to do is put his ears up. One ear there, one ear there, okay? Roughly the same length as the head. I'll do the head next, actually. Here we go. It's got a kind of a very big eye, big friendly eye like that. It's kind of looking over its shoulder to see what's happening. Are you with me on that so far? Okay. So let's just uh, do a black tip on the ear as well. When I have the marker in my hand, black tip. Now, down here, Okay, this is that's the back of his head there. So let's, this is becoming a bit more challenging now. Tummy. Okay, so he's got very big black back legs, one like that coming down here. And his little kind of furry tail sticking up like that. You might see the other back leg over there like that. So those are his two big back legs in there, and then the foot would come out like this. Look, a great big feet of hairs. Let's see one there. Now, what about the, actually I shouldn't have done, I should have come out a little bit like that here and drawn his other foot coming down, but that's easy enough to do. We can do that now. That's his front foot there. 
His other one's hidden from view. You might see the tip of his other back foot though in there. Are you with me so far? Good. So let's get the colors. We can cover, cover over our mistakes here very easily with the, the colors. That's the great thing about them. Um, color, yeah. At this time of the year, it goes from being that beautiful russet color that it is in the summertime to a kind of a, almost like a beige. It'll still be a hint of that russet color. So let me just put that up here. Ready brown. That's what I mean by russets. Maybe you're not familiar with that word. There's the ready brown there. Like that. Up into the ear as well. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to go over this with the beige color, so as you can see how it changes this time of the year. Yeah, that's more like it. Lovely animal. Very fond of the, very fond of hairs. They're so gentle. They, they have a hard time because people catch them and, and race them or chase them in coursing. But that's just one of the things that people have been doing for a very long time as part of country practice. And people are always bringing me baby hairs uh, that they find in the field. They think that they've been abandoned. But they haven't been abandoned at all. <clears throat> it's just the way that the hair goes about its business. It has um. It, it, ha it has this young in a, in a, a situation of, of kind of a, a camouflage in a field. It would leave the young there in the field and uh, comes back every evening time to suckle the young one, to give it some milk uh, when it's very, very young. But after a while, it's big enough to go and uh, get its own grass um, because it's been weaned away from the milk. And then it's better able to look after itself. His big hind legs will have grown. And if it gets disturbed by a predator or by a person, it can run like the Dickens. 40 kilometers an hour. Imagine that. It'll run faster than you can cycle. So it's a, it's a terrific animal. And there's a lot of folklore associated with hares as well. Some people uh, think that hares are actually people that have been changed from uh, being people into animals for some reason or another by a witch. And even in the Burren they have these, these uh, uh, stories. Uh, they're not confined to uh, places like Connemara or Kerry. In the Burren they, 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 they tell stories like that too. Just going to draw the, the grass around it here. We'll have to rush this one a little bit because we're beginning to run out of time. And I want to do a fox to finish with. Everyone loves the fox. So let me just get a little bit of grey dot on your hair. I'm going like that. Panjali, can you give me the highlight, please? There we go. Bright colour in the eye. And now, now he's beginning to take shape. Okay, so I want to get some dark green under here because this is shadow. There's the shadowy bit. Getting this down as quickly as I can. I'm not even thinking about, uh, you know, whether it's uh, look uh, whether it particularly looks like grass, but. I know that because it's the right colour and because it's in shadow, it'll be grand. There we go. Maybe some green, some blue in the sky, what do you think? Yeah, I think so. You can never go wrong with a bit of blue in the sky. Sorry, Esther Mary, did you say something to me? Did you want yeah. something? I could you give me the, the, the spotlight? Just so that it's uh, I think you are. No, it's very okay. small. All right, sorry. sorry. Oh that's brilliant. Yeah, Thank sorry. you. Okay. The shadow there like that. 
change in colour for the winter. And you know that in Scotland, uh, the hair, the same hair as we have, goes absolutely white. Imagine that. It goes absolutely white. And uh, in the Arctic, it does so as well. And that's just a reminder of, of this really being an ice age animal. Even though we've still got them here, they, they, they're really from the, the, the really hangovers from the ice age. So there we are, there's our, there's our hair. Gilria is the Irish name for it. Let's write that down. Well, write down the hair anyway, Irish hair. And you can remember the name yourselves, Gilria. You can look it up actually in the book. It's nice to know the Irish, I think. So let's, let's get on to the last one because we're running out of time. And I just want to show you how to do the fox sitting up as well. And, um, you know, because of the page, I can't actually draw them horizontally, so I'm going to have them sitting up. So let's think how we're going to do this. Uh, yeah. We, we have the oval for his body. There's the oval for his body. And we'll separate the oval up here for his head, like that. Okay? So it's like a snowman that's fallen apart. And remember to do this very, very light. Yeah. Okay, first things first. We have to put a big M up here like this. Does anyone know what that big M is? The tilted M. Yeah, you're quite right. That's his ears, isn't it? That's his ear. So down with the forehead like this. Pointy nose, a bit like my own. America. Now you see the, the you can begin to see the, the character of the, of the creature when you do that. Okay, now we have to give him this furry chest again like that. Okay, he's got a little dark mark that goes down under his eye, and it reminds me of that when I have a marker in my hand. So let's do his body. He's going to be a lot longer than the hair, so I have to think about. Back leg a bit down here like this, and then we'll do the front leg last because it's the hardest one to get in. Uh, I see the edge of that. Of course, the great big tail that he has. Now, you, can you see the outline? Okay. Yep. Yeah. Good. So here's the front leg. The front leg is actually not quite straight down. There's a slight angle in it. Okay. And he's got his paw at the end of this. Okay, well now you might see the other one in there as well, like that. So this back leg will come up here like this. So he's sitting down on the ground, like the hair was. I wonder does he know the hair is there? I hope Five he doesn't go chasing after him. So colors, Five ready? Minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes, okay. Colours. First colour first is this lovely reddy brown colour that all foxes show. Sometimes in bright sunlight it can look almost orange. The backs of the ears are black, so I'm just going to do part of the ear like that. Yeah, that's it, yeah, that's good. And down here, top of his leg. It's brown as well, or ready brown. Madarua, not a great name, that's the Irish name, Madarua, or Shilach, is the other name. Down like this, right down the tail to the tip. The tip is white. I saw one in the sand dunes recently, and he had the whitest tip on his tail. He was out chasing rabbits actually in the sand dunes. Sure, he got some as well. They're very, very smart animals. Okay. Now we have the red bits on. Let's get the black bits on as well. Um, put a little black crane here somewhere. What color is that? Yeah. Here we go. Black on the backs of the ears. Now that's something for you to look out for next time you see a fox. See if you can see that black on the back of the ear. Very distinctive. A lot of predatory animals have uh, interesting backs to their ears. Tigers have got big white spots on the black uh, of the back of their ears. There we go. Okay. 
Sometimes they can be very black or rebellious as well. Foxes can. But this one here that I'm doing, he's going to be sort of doing not so black. Brighten up the color a little bit here with this lovely red. There we go. Oh, yeah, that's it. That's it. Okay. Just that box. Okay. Now, how about the eye? We do dark brown for the eye. Although, the eye can actually be quite yellowish if you see them up close. And uh, some grey underneath here. Uh, no sun getting in there, so that's going to be sort of group like that. Two minutes. Two minutes, okay. Now, a little bit of green grass and we're, we're, we're home then. Here we go. I'm using this kind of olivey green because at this time of the year the green isn't uh, isn't that bright. It's more like that. That colour there. There we go, yeah. A little bit of darkness here. Oops. Shadow. Shadow in there. There's the shadow. And down here. Shadow, shadow, shadow. Okay. Now, I think he's beginning to look like a fox, all right. Oh, a little bit of blue sky. What do you think? Here we go. Now, what about that, hey? Eh? What do you think? That's amazing, Gordon. Good, good, good. Absolutely fantastic. And do you know we're just about to run out of time? Okay. So, thank you so much. Man. That was absolutely no, brilliant. No. I'm just going no, to say, you. I'm just going to tell you a few names of other people that wanted to say hello. Derek, Isla and Gwen are, are, yeah. are watching in and drawing and Aidan and Connell. And Ben, Great. and Anne, and yeah. Judith, and they they are all saying they love that your, your style of drawing, and it's very intuitive and and very free free flowing. Um, they're really enjoying it. I think everybody has has learned a lot and uh, had a great experience with you this evening. We're so grateful, and we're oh, extremely grateful that you illustrated the calf and the cuckoo, um, and the proceeds of, of the book are going to the Burn Hill Trust. So that's wonderful. Thank you so much, Gordon. Okay. They're fantastic no drawings, and you make it look so easy. Everybody's saying you make it look so easy, and they say, did, they say, did you? Were you always so good? Did you? Were you good at drawing from the beginning? <laughs> A lot of this practice. A lot of this practice. practice. This is it. So everybody keep yeah. practicing. Thank you so much, Gordon, yep. and, uh, and, and enjoy Thank the rest you. of the Berlin Winterage weekend. Thank you so much. Take care. Thanks for having Thank me. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.